And what I want to talk about today is the power of free. Who's heard of freemium business models? Has anyone heard of freemium business models? Does anyone know what they mean? Yes? Good. You can join the hundreds of others who've written books over it in the last year. I'm not going to talk about freemium. I'm going to talk about it in a little bit, but I'm going to talk about the idea of free and what that does for us as business people going forward. Who watches admin? That feels like it's fraud sometimes. And that's what freemium's becoming. The reason I don't want to talk about freemium is that it's being taken over. It's becoming the old bait and switch again. Let's give the customers something we think or they think they want for free, and then when they actually want to do something with it, we'll charge them. Freemium has gone from the top of its peak of intellectual curiosity to becoming a tactic. And my inspiration for this talk is let's get back to the opportunity of free. Seth Godin. Anyone heard of Seth? Anyone heard of Jeffrey Miller? Jeffrey Miller is an um, evolutionary psychologist who has decided to look at consumption from the hardwired bit, not from a neuroscience bit, but from why we consume. Can we escape consumerism? It's a little bit of a critique, but if you haven't read anything that's pushed your buttons lately, maybe have a look at what he's doing. Also, Seth points out that the marketer has evolved from being an agent for the firm, i.e. being a representative of the firm that goes over and converts consumers, to perhaps becoming an agent for the customer, representing the firm, uh, representing the customer in the organisation. And that's what I think modern marketing is about, the voice of the customer. So on to free. I need to talk about free. But how am I going to talk about free today? I'm going to talk about free in the sense of this, the pig that wants to be eaten. A thought experiment, not trying to predict or describe what the world is, but what it could be. The beauty of free is that it unbundles the way we think about business. It's completely counterintuitive to the way organisations were set up. We want people to pay for our stuff. I'm going to use this thought experiment, this 18 minutes that I've got, to open a Pandora's box, I hope, of how free can change the way we do business. I'm going to talk about some examples. I'm going to talk about what the future of business looks in a free society. But first, I'm going to talk about love. <laughs> Is love free? Why am I talking about love? I, I like to talk about love because if you ta start to talk about value, people start ascribing a certain meaning to it, a financial meaning. But love like value is subjective. It's hard to understand. Everyone's got a different interpretation of it. You know where we're going with this one, though. Can you buy love? Can you buy value? Authentic love, authentic value. What does it mean? I suppose we should ask Tiger. <laughs> I'm going to carry on one more slide. Who knows who this is? This is the old production model of buying love, looking for daddy. But the irony is, even though the way she approached this, it's an accusation of course, but how happy was this guy? What was the cost of love to him? Everything. He didn't just give up his billions of dollars. He gave up his credibility. Everybody looks at him as an old fool, but he's a happy old fool. Eh? <laughs> Customers happy with value don't complain about the price. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and this is where we start to see how free can open us up. How can they experience the value without paying a price? It's not an old idea. We can all think of free stuff. Public goods, street lights, libraries. People talk about Google being free. We know it's not free, someone's paying, but in most models like that, the public goods, the Google, it's not the user that pays. So how can we use that insight to think about what free can do to our business? Peter Drucker, anyone heard of Peter? Yep. 
one of those great minds who talked about everything. And if you read his books, you can get, doesn't matter what industry you're in, you can start to get some insight from it. And he talked about, he's talking about quality here, but he mentions value. Values, customers pay only for what is of use to them and gives them value. We forget that. What is value to the customer? I saw this on a billboard and I thought, man, that just sums up the difficulty of doing business in today's world. I don't know who you are. Why would I buy what you're selling? Because at the moment, the price operates as a barrier to entry. And we've had 50 years of trying to scam customers. So why would they believe us? It seems like the Clue Train Manifesto, which was written about 10 years ago, revealed the brick wall that we faced. But how do we get over it? How do we get over this brick wall? How do we get customers to experience our value? Because once they've experienced the value, they might not mind paying. We have all had that experience. So what is the value of free? What does it do for us? But first we have to work out value for who? Value for who? I wrote a blog on the, uh, about fear of free on I think a few weeks ago and what got picked up was this idea, I, I, it was a, almost a throwaway line, that charging for magazines has always been a double dip. What did I mean? I meant that the content of magazines is not where the value is. Where's the value in magazines? The value in magazines traditionally is about be delivering an audience to advertisers. Advertisers pay for the magazine. In fact, they pay way more than the readers do. Gourmet closed down, plus four other magazines, Bride, Condé Nast, some of their most successful magazines. Was it because they didn't have any customers? Well, they didn't have any problems with readers, a million subscribers. But because of the recession, their ad pages were down 50%. So the people who were paying for the magazine were not the customers, as traditionally perceived. Not the users, it was the advertisers. And that sort of went, oh, saw a serendipitous moment. Here's another example of how free might have opened that up. Okay, another one. Telecommunications, annual report I read recently. Yes, I do have a boring life, I read annual reports. But it said the market share challenge was their most significant. They couldn't get traction and growth. But only 1% of their revenue came from retail sales. How many of you paid $1,000 for your iPhone? Still didn't make any more than 1% dent or uh, contribution to their revenue. Free phones, anyone? New Zealand is one of the few places where that model still doesn't exist. So I thought, well, what is, why have we got a problem with free? And it's Ted, so I had to think oh, I'd better come up with a cool name or a new word. So I thought, freemium's gone. Let's talk about freestyle businesses, freestyle business models. What can we take from our learning about free? What can we give away free? What are we trying to achieve with free? And what we're trying to achieve is getting people to recognise the service we were provide, not the services, not the services, not the product. Because at the moment, we put all our effort into getting them to pay for that. But what customers want is what it gives them. The iPod, pretty successful, isn't it? Let's think about what would happen if you flipped a model. $350 for an iPod. If you filled it up from iTunes, it's a $40,000 appliance. How many of you use iPods? Do you use iTunes very much, completely? You download from their site, iStore? No, because they haven't made that value. But it's really valuable. How about if they gave it away and actually gave you a $350 credit? Because that might get you into the habit of using iTunes. And the value, I was talking to Sam this afternoon about this particular example. And as he says, I don't use iTunes, but now I spend all the time trying to find a downloaded copy that actually works. You know, five times I have to download the song to find a good one. 
I'll pay a dollar for it to be, and then suddenly there's a $40,000 revenue stream, perhaps. I'm not saying this is the solution to everyone, but you can see, I hope, the potential. I want to talk about some more potential. Free electricity. What does that mean? Do I give electricity away free? No. But maybe you give the appliances away free. Because you can't sell electricity without people having heaters and electric blankets. Hey? And by selling heaters and electric blankets, you're relying on somebody else to make that sale before you can even sell electricity. We live in Dunedin. 6,000 new students. Free electric blanket? Free heater? They're going to use more electricity, but not only that. They're going to remember that. They're going to remember that. You've got them at the time when they're the most... Well, I was going to say vulnerable, but... <laughs> that's, that's my uh, management hat slipping on and not my marketing hat. But when they are forming their relationship with companies, why would they change to a company that didn't give them a free heater or a free electric blanket? Here's the one that I think got me the talk tonight. I talked to Sam about free rugby. Where does rugby make its money? Selling seats in the stadium? Or selling things to Sky Television? Selling the experience to Sky Television? How many of you watch sports on TV? Is it the sport that makes it a good experience? Or is it a full crowd? What is Sky showing? Do they care whether it's rugby, soccer, handball? They want to show the event. And the event is enhanced by free stadiums. Perhaps they'll pay more. In fact, they would pay more if you could guarantee the stadiums were full. Can you guarantee that they're full by giving them away for free? Maybe. Human nature. How long before somebody goes, oh, I want to sit in the same seat? So the ticket's free, but being able to book your ticket costs you money. Being able to do something differently what you value is what you pay for. I don't value the seat, but I value going there with my friends, so I want those five seats every time. It's not the ticket, it's the experience. They might pay for that. Free tourism. Can we do free tourism? I think you can. How much does, the, does anyone, is anyone from DCC Tourism here? No? How much is the DCC Tourism budget? What if they just shifted that to pay for the entry for all tourists to all our attractions? And we could advertise that tourism in Dunedin's free. Would they spend less money? Would we get more people here? So the business operators would still get their entrance fee, maybe, a, maybe not quite as much, but more tourists. Free opens your eyes. Free is an idea that has been corrupted as we try to struggle and fit it back in the way that we understand business as usual. But the future is not about business as usual. It stopped being business as usual November two years ago. So free gives us the opportunity to reinvigorate business because what we want is people to love us. And they're not, if we're going to charge them before we let them love us, back to the old model, we might struggle. I said this was originally concepted as the fear of free talk. The original blog was called fear of free. We have to be something to be afraid of. We have the problem of what are we going to do when your competitors go freestyle? Because that's the game changer. Freestyle is an opportunity. It's not about no one paying, it's about who pays, what they pay, and when they pay. Freestyle shouldn't scare us. Freestyle, freestyle should allow us to do what we want to do, get people to relate to our organisation, engage with our organisation, and then happily pay for the value that we create together. That's me. Oh! <laughs>